Fort Bragg, we're here to mark a historic moment in the life of our country and our military. For nearly nine years, our nation has been at war in Iraq. And you, the incredible men and women of Fort Bragg, have been there every step of the way, serving with honor, sacrificing greatly, from the first waves of the invasion to some of the last troops to come home. So as your Commander-in-Chief, and on behalf of a grateful nation, I'm proud to finally say these two words, and I know your families agree. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Shalom, and welcome to GMS Prophecy Soup. And today's show will contain a variety of topics ranging from the United States troops withdrawing from Iraq to uh, the rising tensions between Russia and uh, the United States and NATO in Syria. And also, we will go over the implications of the new SOPA Act being passed by so called President Obama, which will change the way we use the internet. Now, the video you brothers saw just now is from December 14, 2010, in North Carolina, Fort Bragg. Uh, So-called President Obama is congra congratulating the United States troops on their return home from Iraq, marking the end of the Iraq War, which started in 2003. And under the agreement of the bilateral agreement signed by President Obama in 2008 with uh, the Iraqi puppet leaders, he promised to withdraw United States troops from Iraq by December 31st, 2011. Now, if you look at withdrawal of United States troops from Iraq, or you could look at bilateral agreement in Wikipedia, you will come to this article I have up on the screen now. And this article states that the war in Iraq, which was dubbed Operation New Dawn and Operation Iraqi Freedom, was at a projected cost of more than $900 billion and 4,415 U.S. troops, which were killed in action, which we know which was way more than that. Those numbers are very skewed, and they come from the number of soldiers which died in the hospital, which they have paperwork on. The uh, troops which died in battle, or MIA, they don't count those numbers, and this is just meant to make the United, put the United States in a very good light. So here it is, so-called President Obama is commemorating these troops, giving them praises. But the former Secretary of State, Henry Kissinger, tells us how the administration really feels about these troops. In a book titled, Kiss the Boys Goodbye, How America Betrayed Its Own POWs in the Vietnam War, Henry Kissinger quotes, Military men are just dumb, stupid animals to be used as pawns in foreign relations. So that's how they really feel. Now as the United States troops are leaving Iraq, what they're leaving behind are heaps of burning toxic pits. And it's a policy you can look up. It's called pollute and run. And they just leave toxic heaps burning over there in Iraq. And uh, as he's withdrawing the troops, he leave, he's also leaving behind an army of businessmen because the whole Iraq was never, the whole war in Iraq was never about terror or a war on terror or 9-11. It was all about taking the oil and uh, building their enterprise called the New World Order. Now here's something I found online and this is actually called Writing the Future, Provincial Development Strategies in Iraq. And this was written in November 2007. Well, I won't say that's when it was written. That's when it was published. Now, this is going into building up Iraq from the ground up. So this has to be at least 10 years old. But this show you shows you that the war in Iraq was never about terror. Because this book here 
goes into the whole strategy. Now this is page two of the book, and it goes into the whole process, the whole look at it, the figure one, the provincial development strategy phases, gathering information and analyze, develop vision, formulative objects and strategies. This breaks down the whole uh, rehabilitation of Iraq. So this whole thing, this whole entire thing was planned. So they got this under the belt. And before they can move ahead with the New World Order, the next plan is Iran. Now before we move on to Iran, I want to give a quick news flash. Now you don't hear anything on the news anymore about the war with the U.S. and Afghanistan. And I'm going to tell you why. The reason is because recently the United States has gone in whisper mode throughout the media because they have been getting their asses kicked in Afghanistan and is and you know what just for one soldier it's costing them one million dollars per year per soldier now if you remember not too long ago uh, so-called President Obama was talking about sending 40,000 troops to Afghanistan and this was not too long ago did he ever do that no you know why? Because they are losing miserably and it's getting really expensive. Now, according to this article, the price just to locate, to target, and to kill one Taliban soldier cost the United States $50 million. $50 million for one soldier. So you know what? Pursuant to Obadiah, the eighth verse, the Most High is fulfilling that prophecy because he said he was gonna destroy the wise men out of Edom so their military strategies are not working anymore and then he also said that the mighty men of Teman talking about the army they're gonna be dismayed so I'm gonna say this according to the scriptures that uh, over there in the Middle East Iraq uh, Iraq is the last stronghold that they're gonna take they're gonna get a hold of because their next strategy is Iran and the Most High said that if they can't if they can't handle Afghanistan, how the hell are they going to handle Iran with I, Russia backing them up? And if you read I, Ezekiel 38, it tells you right there that they're not going to get past Russia and Iran. And it tells you in Ezekiel 39 that them starting this World War III is not going to end the way they think it's going to end. The Most High said that he's going to smite the missiles out of their hand. And he's going to send them right here to America. So you know what? You can say bye-bye to the boys. You can say bye-bye to all of America. Well, hundreds of U.S. and NATO soldiers reportedly arrive on the border of Syria. According to a former FBI official, hundreds of troops have mysteriously landed on the border and are training militants to overthrow the regime of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. But she says the U.S. media has been suspiciously silent about all of this, the whistleblower that is helping to bring this to light. Sabelle Edmonds joined me here in studio a little earlier to expose some of the details. So here goes America, Esau, getting himself into more shit. That's why the Lord said in Habakkuk 2 and 5 that he transgressed by wine and that he's a proud man. Neither keepeth at home. I mean, this guy is everywhere into all types of shit. I mean, he just got through with Iraq now he's now he's set up a war here in Homeland Security on American soil with the, the uh, Defense Authorization Act then he's over there in a war with Afghanistan which he's losing which he lost then now he's going into another war which he's gonna lose miserably with Syria because Syria is backed with by Russia Russia and Syria, this whole thing is over controlling oil because whoever controls the resources controls the people, controls the real wealth. Money is not wealth. Oil is wealth. Land. Now, Russia and Syria have business ties in the oil business. Basically, that business tie solidifies Russia in the oil business. So Russia is not prepared to let that go. And Russia's got technology that surpasses the United States. Remember who got to the, well, the so-called moon first, which was Russia, with the uh, Sputnik. 
And the whole reason that United States made up the Apollo, the, the four, all right, which is French for false, the false Apollo mission was because the Russians was making them look bad. And the Russians going to make them look bad, bad again because guess what? The Most High is going to be with the Russians to take out America. So let's see what Russians' response is this, this blatant trespass by America. I mean, there's Hello, everybody. April Today 2011. is December 16, 2011. But this is dated the 17th because they're ahead of us. Syria deploys Russian anti-sea missiles on coast. Scuds on Turkish border. Expanded Russian military and diplomatic support for the Assad regime was underscored by the development Friday, December 16th, of advanced Moscow-supplied Yankant SSN-26 shore-to-sea missiles along Syria's Mediterranean shore to fed off any potential Western Turkish invasion by sea. Last week, Russian airlifted to Syria 3 million face masks against chemical and biological weapons, and the Admiral Kutsinatsov, and I'm sorry I'm pronouncing that wrong, carrier and strike group was sent on its way to Syria's Mediterranean port of Tartus. Russian naval sources in Moscow stressed that the flotilla is armed with the most advanced weapons against submarines and aerial attack. Upon arrival, the Russian craft will launch a major maritime air maneuver in which Syrian units will take part. Syria has received from Russia 72 Yakinok missiles able to hit marine targets up to a distance of 300 kilometers, i.e. over the horizon, our military sources report. The missile's radar remains inert, making it hard to detect until it's close to target. It is then switched on to guide its aim. Its high speed, 2,000 kilometers per hour, enables the Yakonot to strike before its target has time to achieve self-defense system. So you brothers get the gist of the situation. It's an all-out war. Now if you brothers want to see the uh, SOPA Act, or the Stop Online Piracy Act is what it's short for, you can watch it in my next video. If you're watching this, then that video should be up. And I'm going to leave you brothers with a few scriptures. Habakkuk 2 and 5. Revelation the 17th chapter, Revelations 18 and 3, Revelation 14 and 9, and Jeremiah 51 11, Jeremiah 50 41. I like to give thanks to the Most High and His Son. I'd uh, like to give thanks, double honors to my elders, and I like to say shalom to you brothers out there doing the work. Keep it going. Shalom.